All right, so I know this is a different kind of video than I usually make, but I feel like this needs to be talked about. And now, here is Walt Disney. Welcome to a little bit of Florida here in California. This is where the early planning is taking place for our so-called uh, Disney World Project. So in the year 1971, Walt Disney gathers his team and he goes, guys, I want to make another park. And they go, okay, because you never question Walt Disney on anything. Now, of course, they went, well, what should be at the park? And Walt has the brilliant idea, and he goes, let's just bring Disneyland and its Magic Kingdom with its four little areas and move it to Florida. And they go, why not? So what are the four lands? Well, you got Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland. Visitors can catch a glimpse of what the future holds. You got Adventureland. Frontierland. And of course, Fantasyland. Not that one. We don't talk about that Fantasyland. We're talking about the original Fantasyland. That's right. You remember this part of the park? Yeah, not a lot of people do. This part of the park seems to go almost unnoticed, acting as a gateway from one place to the other. But that's just a shame. You see, this part of the park holds one of the best attractions in all of Walt Disney World. Mickey's Filler Magic. It's a 3D symphony of fun for everyone. Mickey's Filler Magic. New in the Magic Kingdom Park. Celebrating the history of Disney films, this ride has lived in the park for over 18 years. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the ride is perfect. I believe there's so much more that can be improved upon. That's why today I'm presenting my ideas to the Disney Imagineering team in the hopes that we can make this ride something better. So join me as we take a deeper look into Mickey's Filler Magic. Now, for those of you who don't know, Filler Magic follows a rather simple story. You receive your 3D opera glasses before you walk into the main theater. Goofy raises the curtains and we see that Donald is asleep. Mickey tells Donald to get everything ready even though this is his show and it should have been ready beforehand. Donald does so and decides to take over the show. The instruments try to play and after Donald tries to kill a flute by launching it off stage and stomping it, the instruments attack Donald before teleporting him into the world of Disney films as they would. The rest of the ride goes on as you would expect. Donald tries to get the hat from the characters, but is unable to. Donald then eventually does get the hat after some wacky antics happen. Mickey finally returns, he fixes everything, and then he proceeds to launch Donald into a brick wall right over your head. You then exit the main theater and are returned into Fantasyland. There are many things that need to change if this ride is to live for yet another 18 years. The first of which will be The story of the ride is not confusing, but it does need an update. I still believe that the story should focus around the idea of Donald trying to get the hat. The story needs to focus on one character doing something. I also think that the inclusion of Disney films is important, as the entire purpose of this ride is to celebrate all of Disney's films. However, the films should be changed in their order. And we should add some other films. Let me explain. The current films are some of the most celebrated Disney films of all time. Beauty and the Beast, Fantasia, Little Mermaid, Peter Pan. When news came out that Coco would join the roster, everyone, including myself, was amazed. This ride was finally receiving an update. It does feel a little out of place though. To go from the Lion King to Coco is a bit strange, but I do like the idea that the Imagineers are going for. So. Here's how I think the plot should go. The opening remains the same. Donald gets attacked by the instruments and put into the world of Beauty and the Beast. Be our guest plays and Donald crashes into the plates as he does in the original. When he comes out, Tiana is seen singing her song almost there. Donald would bounce on the tables and Tiana continues to sing. The Princess and the Frog wasn't a hit when it originally came out, but has begun to receive more recognition as time goes on especially as of recently with the idea to take away Splash Mountain and put a ride focused on the movie there. 
When the segment ends, Donald would be locked in the building. Then, the Fantasia scene would play as normal. Next would come The Little Mermaid and how she wants to be part of your world. Typically, The Lion King scene would come next. This scene. The Lion King is a fantastic film and I think the scene should stay, so don't worry about that. But the way it's presented, for lack of a better word, stinks! Rather than celebrating the film, this scene is just a giant kaleidoscope encompassing the audience. It's essentially color vomit for the eyes. Plus, it doesn't help that Simba jump scares the audience as soon as this scene starts. This scene is the only one that I have a problem with because it feels like a giant wallpaper for your desktop. So let's fix it. Donald enters the scene from The Little Mermaid by swimming out of a watering hole. Simba begins to sing the same song as the original. Just then, the animals begin to pick up the hat and throw it onto one another. Donald continues to chase the animals with the hat. By the end of the scene, Donald finds the hat at the top of the stack of animals. Donald grabs the hat, but then falls and causes the animals to all fall as well. The dust blows and we are brought to the Peter Pan scene. As Donald is flying, the camera would pan up to the moon, and the moon would slightly change over to the introduction of the Coco scene. At the end of the scene, Donald is taken to the sky, allowing for yet another clear transition to the Aladdin scene. The ending is the same. Donald flies, Gilbert Gottfried appears and steals the hat. <laughs> Mickey gets the hat and acts like this is his show, and then Donald hits a ton of bricks. With this new plot in place, the ride changes some elements story-wise, but keeps the original story in place. But this is not enough to make this ride last for years. Next, we have to look at... When Filler Magic first came out, many were absolutely amazed with how it looked. The animation used still has a certain charm about it that not many other rides can achieve. We also know that this type of animation can still happen thanks to the Coco scene. Nowadays, not many rides try to implement animation and cartoons into them. The closest we may have to that is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway ride in Disney's Hollywood Studio. So the animation itself, I don't think should change. Now, let's travel to two different parks and rides in Florida. Epcot's Short Film Festival and Universal Studios Race Through New York starring... Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> In both rides, the technology used is something that the ride would greatly benefit from. Specifically, I'm referring to the ground. In both rides, the entire floor moves around, simulating movement. The entire floor can move forward, backward, shake, rise, lower, and can make movements that make the rider focus. Now, movement on the ground is not enough to make this ride memorable. So, I turn to the Animal Kingdom's It's Tough to Be a Bug. Another ride that needs some improvements, but we can talk about that later. In this ride, the seats don't move around much, but the seats themselves do move independently from one another. The bottom of the seat bumps up and down, and the back of the seats can poke. These tiny details to a ride cause the rider to believe that what they are seeing is actually happening, which is the main goal that we are trying to achieve with Mickey's Filler Magic. So, we have the floor moving, we have the seats moving independently from one another, and the last thing I want to talk about is the 4D effects. This ride is proud to call itself a 4D experience, but the actual effects could be improved upon. When Donald gets splashed from a broom, the audience should get splashed. When Lumiere is showing the food, the smell should overtake the room. I want 4D effects. If you are going to have a ride that has 4D effects, use those 4D effects to their extreme. So, the plot is updated, the technology has changed, all that's left now is... I'm not talking about the animation specifically, and I'm mainly going to be discussing about one room in particular. As you enter the waiting room, there are many posters hung up. Genie sings the blues, An Evening with Wheezy, alongside others. This is the perfect way to open up this ride. It establishes that most of the shows are successful and shows how the ride is supposed to go. The audience takes a few more steps into another room, which I will refer to as the blue room, because that's all it is. Nothing happens in this room. You may hear some voices of the cast, but there's nothing going on. I'm fine if Disney wants to keep this room here, 
It builds anticipation and allows for everyone to meet with one another. But the room needs to be updated just a little bit. Now, I am by no means an interior decorator, but here are some things that I would change to make this room more memorable. The railings on the side can contain musical notes along them, similar to a musical staff. The carpet could contain hidden Mickeys, Donalds, and other characters that appear within the ride. Goofy, Mickey, Minnie, and others could be seen as shadows behind the blue curtain, similar to what Star Tours does. Minnie has a painting in the waiting room, so what if another character has one here? The chandeliers themselves would look amazing as the treble and bass clef. The lights on the chandeliers could be shaped like musical instruments too, such as a violin and tuba. Also the glasses. Every single ride that uses 3D in any way at any Disney park use these glasses. Instead, let's change them to fit in with the rest of the ride. Disney can even reuse the glasses they already have by simply adding musical notes on the side of them. If Disney is feeling a little bit ambitious, they could take these glasses one step further by making them uniquely shaped. Add bass clef symbols to the side of the glasses so that they grab the viewer's ears. Sorry, I've been thinking about this for a while. At the end of the day, I know that this ride can look so much better. And now that Disney Imagineers have the technology to do so, they should take full advantage of making this ride look brand new. Walt Disney is known for always looking forward into the future. When Disneyland did well, he moved on to create Walt Disney World in Florida. After he passed, his team continued his dream and have since created multiple parks around the world. Now that Walt Disney World is in its 50th anniversary, many are trying to update the parks in new ways, which is fantastic. Epcot is bringing in new rides, Hollywood Studios is still celebrating its introductions of Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge, and Animal Kingdom has kite tails. We don't talk about kite tails. <laughs> of course, the Magic Kingdom is also receiving updates as well. Of every park, it makes sense that the Magic Kingdom should be the most focused on. But with everything to do with the Magic Kingdom, filler magic is always forgotten. With the introduction of Coco, it seems as though Disney is trying to bring life back into this attraction. But it isn't enough. If they want this ride to stay, many things need to be updated including the plot, the technology used, and the aesthetic scene. Do I think Disney will hear my ideas? No. And even if they did, would they accept them? Probably not. But that's not the goal. This video was made as a love letter to one of the most underrated rides at Walt Disney World. Mickey's Filler Magic. I know that this ride can last for many more years, but we have to change it in order to do so. So, Disney Imagineers, it's up to you. Will you allow future generations to go on this ride and experience all of the joys and wacky adventures that Mickey and all of the characters go on? Or are you going to take this ride and put it back into the Disney vault? It's up to you. Well, my greatest reward, I think, is that uh, I've been enabled to build this wonderful organization, I've been able to enjoy good health, and uh, the way I feel today, I feel like uh, I can still go on being a part of this thing after 40 some odd years in the business. And uh, also to have the, the public uh, appreciate and accept what I've done all these years. That, that is a great reward.